Welcome to Bon Mots, where we'll be applying the Manzer Omosi Thurlow scale of quantitative analysis of pop culture narrative through a binary system. Or Mots! This podcast contains spoilers, mature content, and language. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Bon Mots. I'm Scott Thurlow, of course, as always, joined today by Stephen Omosi. Hello. And Jonathan Ian Manzer. Huh? And tonight, fellows, we'll be discussing the movie which is entitled Frankenstein's Army. And I believe Ian has a prepared a synopsis of this movie. Castle Wolfenstein? More like Castle Frankenstein. <laughs> of course. Uh, but I, I think I agree with that for sure, and we'll have to tell you why. So, let's jump into it. Steve-O, what did you think about the introduction of Frankenstein's Army? The intro was pretty good. Um, it was... I d- Does anybody know this guy's name? The, there is a guy... So, this is a found footage film. There's a guy behind the camera the entire time. I don't know what his name was. Secret Captain. I'm sure they said it at some point. Captain but I don't Undercover. Remember. Yeah. He's this... He, ruining the movie for you. One of the big twists. He's a secret captain of the Russian army. Um, he starts off with a little monologue about how he's like proud to serve in the Red Army and kind of just gets it started on, on the on the fountain footage track. Uh, it's mm. a pretty good little... Just jumps you right in. Opening and narration. Then, as soon as that's over, they start uh, the the the. Go to, ahead. To that point, though, he his entire premise is that he's making like a propaganda film for right. the Red Army, and he's like the soldiers in battle, and yeah. Yeah, so he, it's exactly like that. It, it's just starts off as a propaganda film, and it's his little introduction to himself, and then mm-hmm. for most of the movie, he's behind the camera. Um, so right after he does his little introduction, they start going. They're just on a mission. They're kind of going through the Russian wilderness. Um, it starts off well. I, I think that they did a good job with, you know, getting you into the story slowly, kind of leading you there. So, I mean, that's about as much as I have to say about the introduction. All right. It was an interesting war movie. Like, yeah, it's low budget. The entire movie is, but... I really felt it was like a well done, and I, I don't believe they were in Russia. I think they were uh, this Red, Red Army's marching on Berlin, I, and they're kind of forward thing with it. I got, I got that out of it too, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So you're seeing like uh, there's like action shots. You're seeing the aftermath of like wars. This is a scene where they have a, uh, a Nazi artillery piece with right. a skeleton, uh, skeletized soldier. There, it's actually like was really cool, and it took me maybe. 15, 20 minutes to understand that this was a found footage, uh, like horror movie. <laughs> okay. Like, it, I was kind of so wrapped up in, like, the fun of a bunch of guys, uh, Russian soldiers going. And to the point, they also treat the, uh, the, 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 uh, the director, I guess, the guy who's uh, filming it, rather poorly throughout. Yeah. Right. Like, um, he's Jewish, so they're making, doing, uh, slurs against him the entire time the captain's always exasperated that he is like holding them back you said, and, yeah. and so overall like I, I i was i was much more interested in kind of like this part than the horror later on um, <laughs> fair enough i agree with that almost like uh, something you said it, it was like what i got out of it was he was it was a world war ii version of being an embedded journalist so like that was <laughs> sort of an interesting like little like twist like yeah he's making a propaganda film but He's like, yeah, as you said, he's going along with them. He's like, you know, like behind, and they're like, stay behind, blah blah blah. You know, they, they 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 don't view him as one of their own, really. Even though he's, you know, his only job is there to make them look good back to the, uh, you know, the people uh, at home who are watching the war from afar. So yeah, I agree with that. It was sort of a very interesting setup. I, I indeed liked it. I enjoyed his little monologue. You know, start off with he's testing his film and he's you know explaining like who he is and what he's doing. I thought it was all perfectly fine set up. And yeah, as Ian just said, uh, it for the first part of it, if if it could have been made into a different movie if they just followed them through like the war tour and like no man's land that they were marching through. It had a lot of the uh, tropes of war movies. Yeah. He's an educated individual, so he's kind of outside where the the grunts are disrespectful. He was the guy from Enemy at the Gates, if you will, not Jude Law, his, the other guy. Oh, like, they, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they also do a like you really get a sense that the Russian army is very interest like yeah pro Russia obviously, mm-hmm. but. They're out looking to rescue uh, like uh, Russians that might be stranded like, Russians stranded. Or, yeah. mm-hmm. or captured ones. Actually, that's the whole premise of like where mm-hmm. they go throughout the uh, why they end up where they are. Right. But 
to the point there's a part where like I believe they like kill a bunch of German civilians and it was heavily implied if not outright and they the the soldiers kind of like make sure he's not filming any of that and like kicking I think they kick him to the ground and like cover his it was uh, a dark moment like yeah Yeah, so it was a commentary on that I took it as such so it actually captures these like war moments very well yeah I mean there are a lot of moments just like that you know from that era and probably every war where like you know there are things that the soldiers don't actually want people to see or like you know of course war crimes don't yeah exactly stuff like that also I wanted to say perhaps while we're on the intro part we should talk we should introduce how we came to this movie Mm, um so Frankenstein's Army not probably a movie that I would ever actually like go out and find and watch but um, it would be one that we I decided would. to watch a random movie tonight and and do a show on it. So uh, we roulette a random genre, and we came up with historical horror somehow. And uh, we had what three movies to pick from? And this one won, but and, uh, and this one yeah got the got the random choice. Well, we actually went on Netflix, flipped through the horror uh, section pick out which mm. of the movies anything that to. fit into historical horror which is pretty hard to find go try to find it yourself there were like but three like of the, them I do like the alliteration of that uh, phrase that we came up with but yes uh, so anything anyone else, anything to add to the introduction well, I'm good with the introduction alright so what, Steve what are you rating it I'm gonna give the intro one alright I, I will agree it was a like a fantastic like kind of low budget war documentary from the point of view <laughs> of a guy who yeah. uh, is trying to be a journalist so right. I thought like they actually capture some great like thematic things there, so mm-hmm. I have to give it a one. All right. Well, speaking about it broadly, uh, what do you think of no, the body? So, uh, you didn't give your uh, well, it's a one. In case you didn't get it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ian, your turn. The body of this film. Okay, so in the introduction, you're dealing with all the war things. That's actually a good, what, half hour? Um, Maybe 35, minutes, so, yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Of them. And then they get to a church. Well, there's one thing that happens first, if you're talking about when it kind of switches over. Oh, the the, the dead body jump scare. skeleton. Yeah. yeah, I count that which, as a... which I was I was really expecting there to be a ton of jump scares, and there was really only the one. Yeah. A lot a lot of the other stuff was not necessarily jump scare. Like it was just kind of like horror right in your face. But this is the one that was like we're trying to get people. It was the jump. most obvious one. Yes. I agree with that. So yeah, I, I absolutely agree. A lot like you did a lot of tight corners and right. like, mm. creatures up here, but beyond that, no, there weren't that many jump scares. Mm. So they end up in this uh, cathedral, and like there's a pile of nun corpses. And they enter the uh, they enter the church, and there's like it's like a factory. They end up meeting, and hey, what I thought was a fantastic uh, call to Frankenstein. They end up meeting this uh, like civilian worker who's there to feed the animals. They end up crippling him, so he has a uh, neck, uh, like uh, hurting his leg. So he ends up like having a limp could, throughout the rest of They shoot him in the leg, yeah. Him, yeah. Shoot him in the leg, and then cut off his finger. Yes, yeah. and he ends up leaving like <laughs> follow me type of thing. Yeah. Leads him into, into <laughs> this the wave. Yes. yes. So uh, it was a great call to Igor without definitely mentioning it. So then, it's basically a horror movie. Like they end up with a bunch of like it, it's. I believe the description said it was a zombie film, but it wasn't really. It's all of these kind of people who've been experimented on so they have like knives for hands right. and lobster claws or <laughs> if you ever played like Bioshock or Evil Within like they're, yeah. they're, a big daddy was in it like, <laughs> all of these different like creatures there was, it, there was a big like pot with legs at yeah. some point <laughs> even a little bit of fallout I got and there's something else I'm going to say about that later but yes go on but they go through like yeah so all these monsters are coming after them they're getting picked off one by one some German civilians come brief I thought they're like, and then all of a sudden they're gone. <laughs> like, everyone yeah. died. Uh, and so, like, eventually it's down to the uh, cameraman, which, uh, but th- that being the conclusion. But again, it's it's really kind of Hellraiser yeah. slash Evil Within type kind of horror. Uh, a lot of, like, mo- very ineffective monsters, or they're very effective, <laughs> depending on how yeah. the plot calls Yeah, them. exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's basically the sum up of the body. Uh, yeah, I agree. I enjoyed the body. Like you said, like, the first half hour, we'll say, between half hour and 40 minutes, was in, you know, just kind of a straight-up, almost documentary shot, of course, style. Like, 
propaganda piece for World War II film. And then, yeah, they find like they find a weird skeleton in the woods as they're marching to the next destination, and that sort of like gives you the hint. And then the um, the body that jumps up at you, the corpse. Cut. Yeah. Although that that weird skeleton that they find in the woods has no bearing on any other creature that they like encounter. You know, like they, it, I got something else out of that. So that like this thing that they find in the woods is like a human skeleton with like the head of a bird, I guess, or something. And there is no like there's not really a reference to like mixing animals mm-hmm. and humans at all other than that it had like extended claws which you could say be bird claws but it was also bipedal oh no it was a, it was a nice hint I thought. No, the body that they find with the jump scare he has the claws on him yeah so that's a better hint at what is going to um come later but there is also a woman with who's like head is attached to a teddy bear yeah well that's much so, later on yeah, but, but again like, so it, 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 they don't really play by their own rules in the <laughs> sense of what like creatures they kind of do and do I thought that was nice it was like, it was like an early experiment like oh mm-hmm. Frankenstein was fucking around seeing what he could do but regardless I, I enjoyed it th- throughout so um, even you know once it became a full on horror movie it was I'm going to say perfectly paced I'll say that to a later question mm-hmm. but yeah I, I enjoyed it I, I think it knew what it wanted to, to do with itself and had a little bit of fun and, but took itself <laughs> seriously enough yeah, I, 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 I think you're right. I, you know, it, the body of this film is like kind of weird and like. So like the body of the experiment. Slightly. <laughs> it was sliced together. Well, I, I was gonna say it was slightly uneven at times, but, <laughs> um, for the most part, I think that they kind of drew you in pretty well. Like the, as you mentioned earlier, the monsters were completely ineffectual when, like trying to assault the cameraman they would like be directly in his face waving claws at him and somehow not hitting him the entire the entire movie that's that was one of the biggest things that i had is like why would this per why would this person not be dead long ago but other than that um i think it did a pretty decent job of, like bringing you through the story and keeping pace you know like keeping the pace up and and you know there, there wasn't af- after the first uh, attack in the church. There wasn't much like downtime at all. Mm, yeah, you know, it's kind of like recouping for a minute, and then you're back to fighting some horrible monsters. I have to say, one of the, the blessings of the body was that at no point was I ever bored in this movie. Yeah, I was always very interested, and when there's actually a very uh, definitive moment where you say that Act Two ended and Act yeah. Three started. And I remember we, we paused for, like, uh, go get some stuff, break during that movie. And I said, uh, I mentioned, if, if the movie ended here, I would have been totally satisfied. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't know how they were going to continue on for the other 30 minutes or so that they did. But overall, like, again, is it ridiculous at times? Yes. Do some of the fights look like Power Rangers? <laughs> yes. But it's it's a very it's- well-envisioned idea of what a first person shooter like horror yeah. uh, video game Definitely would agree. be like if filmed as a movie and I think that they did that job very well and those bad fight scenes are kind of a function of you know the budget the nature of it sure I agree with that um, yeah I, I like what you said that it, it at no point did I say to myself damn I wish this movie would be over soon mm-hmm. you know, it, it kept me going at a perfectly you know d- the pace picked up a bit and then but it wasn't too fast and it kept you moving and kept everything going quite nicely but neither did it brush over things either mm. so that's all to say about that so uh, anybody else got anything else to say about the body of Frankenstein's army if you will no. alright so uh, well I'm giving it a one as you may have gathered steve I will also give this a one mm-hmm. I, for all the, the points I laid out it's definitely giving a one alright so now we're on to the conclusion of this film the denouement if you will of Frankenstein's army <laughs> uh, I, I greatly enjoyed it they, it was it was a humorous little touch but it was the we'll get to this later but in, what happens in the plot is the the bumbling like younger soldier who they keep constantly berating for making mistakes and fucking up etc he actually escapes alive with all the with all the film and all the evidence and gets a commendation and the last shot is him in the of, of old photo next to Stalin like being commended <laughs> There's so it, much more. There's to so it. much more yeah. to the conclusion. That, yes, that's just the very ending. It's a coda to it, but that's to me. I took it as a, the perfect cap off, if but, you will. But if you want to go to like the conclusion, 
All right, so after the horror elements, the main character is stranded by himself in this bar. And, he, and you end up seeing the factory, like the, the inner workings right. of the Frankenstein's. The depths like, of Frankenstein's, yes. And there's a couple of horror elements there. But then he eventually meets Frankenstein and becomes his, like, um, like filming all his work for posterity's sake. He's a documentarian. Yes. And it eventually leads to Frankenstein obviously betraying him. <laughs> and then the kid, as Scott pointed out earlier. But you think through. that's the ending? I thought that was, like, the final... Well, this is the conclusion. There's, this mm-hmm. is Act oh, 3. Oh, yeah. I would agree. Like, all, all right. that is part of the conclusion. Like, the climax and the conclusion. All right. Fine. Fair enough. I see your point. Um, but I'm going to, like... Even given that, I thought that was great as well. Mm-hmm. So like, I was like, the cap off to me was like the perfect seal on whatever everything else that, that led up to. Yeah, he's kind so. of he's kind of just wandering through this, you know, maze of <laughs> horror castle you know, Frankenstein. Man, every, every kind of monster you could possibly imagine is just like hanging out. Like, but now that there's some. What's interesting <laughs> was some of the monsters weren't even like. Combat monsters. They're just functional. Yeah, he had like a, like basically people just carrying like pushing carts full of dead like bodies. He had his kitchen monster. Yeah, laundry right? monster. <laughs> like I said, yeah, etc. Gone Zebo. Yeah, uh, you know the whole thing. Like him, uh, so he gets pushed down this uh, slide, this blood slide. Yeah, the kill room. Slide. Into like the yeah, slide. into yeah, a room which had previously held some kind of fan monster. No, excuse me. That's Airman, Nazi Airman. <laughs> Nazi Airman. That's what I called it as. Um, <laughs> In addition to Bioshock and Evil Within, they also had. I, I took that as a Mega Man. They looked just like this so, fucking thing from Mega. You know Man. what? Instead of Doctor, it should have been Doctor Wiley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. So after they kill Doctor Frank and Wiley. So after they yeah. killed, uh, you know, fucking Airman, up in the in the upper room, they decide to. Uh, well, the whole band decides to just strand him there and they knock him down the chute and they all take off obviously they come back later mostly as monsters <laughs> um but you know he kind of winds his way through all these hallways and uh this entire maze of a this labyrinth of a uh castle that frankenstein has in there where he's eventually uh cornered by seemingly hundreds of monsters <laughs> who are just chasing know. him down hallways Not hundreds like, but dozens for sure a lot um and yeah, I, honestly, I kind of thought he was dead when he when he was captured. But then he gets captured. Frankenstein feeds him some goop, <laughs> like force feeds him some goop for a while, and uh, <laughs> Frankenstein dumps a bowl <laughs> down his throat, yeah. just choking the entire time, and then uh, makes him film everything. And uh, I don't know. I I would have to. I, I I think so. We just watched this. I think I would have to like think about it some more before I decide whether it was a really good uh ending like finale you know this whole climax and everything but while i was watching it i enjoyed it Mm. and i think that's the important thing for at least for Mm. this uh you know for for mots where for what we're doing um so i I mean that that's my take on it i i find that with horror i I (laughs) generally don't get too scared at horror movies anymore i used to watch them all the time as a kid I tend to find that the worst part of a horror movie is generally the ending. Mm. Uh, they often don't know how to close out. I agree right. with that. Yeah. So, or you had the lone survivor kind of, and they kind of do that for a while. The lone survivor running through, like trying to escape all the monsters. But then they do an interesting ending. And it's, I really, off the top of my head, I'm sure if I thought about it hard, I can come up with Something parallels. Like but I don't remember a horror movie having such a, like, interesting ending like this where you actually like spend time with the villain and see how yeah. and I'm quite sure all of the science was 100% accurate in this movie <laughs> but definitely <laughs> note no it wasn't <laughs> but again like it all made sense in universe right well uh, when he when he mixed the uh, I, I like when he mixed the um, the Nazi brain well, and the communist that, brain yeah. together I'm sorry. I'm getting to that soon enough. All right. That comes into another question, but true, even so, go on. So, like, it's part of the ending. Yeah, but exactly. So, like, and 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 you know, at the end, the monster tries to rip his own brain out. Basically, Mm -hmm. the monster who was previously a comrade. Mm. Um. But yeah. So comrade radio. That's what I call it. Solid ending. I thought Uh, this movie actually really surprised me with how good it was. Because I think it had like two stars on Netflix or something, but I think it was one and a half stars. The whole point is you can't, can't go by arbitrary ratings like that. Apparently, this is a rating, of course. Apparently not. 
Go I'm ahead. also pretty sure that his laboratory was built by whoever uh, does Umbrella's laboratory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Resident Evil. Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason it, for it to be this complicated. It definitely, it definitely had a tinge of that, for sure, 100%. So, given that, what'd you give the ending, Steve-O? Um, I will give it a one. All right. E? It kept my interest throughout, and it's something I haven't seen very often right. in horror, so I definitely to give it one for originality. For sure, me too. One officially, one for me. All right, that brings us to themes. Steve-O, would you like to go on about the themes in Frankenstein's Army? This I'm a little bit unsure about. I don't... I guess I guess the, the theme was like talking about uh, the, you know, kind of the old idea of like the Nazis doing all these crazy experiments and like kind of riffing off of that. But as far as deeper themes go I'm not maybe maybe you guys have something more to say about this I I don't I don't know if there was anything like above like this is just a kind of an interesting horror movie you know I agree in that aspect but you cannot this is a retelling of uh, Frankenstein and a retelling of World War 2 yes kind of very accurate well we all know the Russian army was defeated by uh, (laughs) like mutated creatures <laughs> and you so if it's, it's based off of Frankenstein you have to compare it thematically to Frankenstein and it it's a surface like homage mm, because right. none of the points that Frankenstein was <laughs> attempting to make made it into this so I they they hit a couple of the reference points without understanding the deeper context of it Sure, I agree with that. Um, I will I give you. I, I disagree with Steve O somewhat. There was a theme I think that was glossed over, but Frankenstein himself says of oh, Nazis and communists, they're always fighting. I, my master plan is to meld them into one, <laughs> met, you know, robotic man brain thing. So I think Fair that was a, it was a good comment. He, he even says capitalists are he's, he's, everyone is wrong. They they can't understand each other. I thought that was interesting. So the theme is raw monsters. On yes, the yes, of but, course. Uh, that is the never, theme. Like, Always. They, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they really get into that. Like they right. Say that's what it. I said. So they glossed over it. As I said, it was a dropped in theme, and then it wasn't really the theme. But I like that they at least mentioned it right. a little bit. See, the problem is that they don't really explore any of like they, they briefly yeah. mention that like You're right the but. communists, Nazis, Westerners, what's the difference? But it's never explored, really. It just kind of, again, it's all this kind of surface, like, right. references. As I said, they dropped it in. Was it really a theme? No. But I like that they mentioned it, is all I'm saying. It, it, lends, it lends me a little bit of credit to, to it. But it, it, you're right. It wasn't an outright theme, nor did they explore it, at, at, really, other than just dropping it in as one line. I, I don't know if anybody else has anything else to say, but I, I'm going to say that I can't really give it full credit for, for a good or coherent theme <laughs> throughout. <laughs> Um, I don't know what you guys think. No, I think it's if we're rating this as a horror movie, I guess it's better than average. But if we're rating this against other movies, yeah, I think we have to. Oh, you rate it on its own merits, right? And if if it's on as a movie, I really can't right. give it uh, a one for this. So I'm going to give it a zero. All right, fair enough. Zero Steve, are you giving a zero? Yeah. Like I said, like I get, I understand you guys' points both fully. Just that I think they did a good enough job, and even if taken at face value as a horror movie, you know, they're all monsters, really, and create everyone creates their own monster. I'm giving them the one. <laughs> all right. I all think right. it's a reach, but all right. Which brings us to antagonists. Sir Ian, what do you think of the antagonist in Frankenstein's Army? Well, Fra- Frankenstein doesn't appear until a third of the way through, and I kind of like how they build his Two-thirds character. Of the way through. Oh, yeah, sorry. even Two-thirds more than that, really. Uh, that, I didn't mean to say that, uh, but they do a good job of building his character throughout. You see the repercussions of not only in the monsters, but in like how, what happens to bodies. Like, I mean, it's very all the well, viscera scattered throughout that they find before yeah, they even encounter anything. Yeah, it's very well paced throughout of developing the villain, and then when right. you eventually do meet him, as I said, it's much different than most other horror movies where the ending is usually weak. You you get to know this character and. I, I don't like agree with his points, but like you have to see like the method behind the madness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's certainly crazy, but he or also the method has, of his madness. He also has least. like a backstory that kind of explains it, and he he has you know 
not only the backstory that explains it, but the backstory that why he's crazy, but the backstory that explains how he got into like making monsters and all this stuff. Sure. And if if you take a look into his character, not you see the factory first, but then way before you meet him, as the main character is running through the kind of the uh, the Raccoon City maze <laughs> that is yeah. uh, Frankenstein's castle, you, you you're seeing his like uh, his room. You, I think a great character moment and I mentioned this earlier is the woman's head uh, still living attached to the teddy bear and a yeah. case and a glass case yes. that is well that's right before you meet him yeah but like you, you, it, it establishes again visually a lot of his character mm. before he has even to say anything but I think they do a very good job of building who this person is right I, I actually I very much agree with that that I think that when he goes into his room or you know his quarters or whatever <laughs> his quarters is a good way um I think that that establishes a lot of like Frankenstein's personality without before you even meet him, hmm. which is kind of cool. And um, on top of that, I thought that the that his you know interactions with the main character and the guy that played him I thought did a really good job. Mm. Yes, of uh, just being kind of eccentric, you know, like just being kind of weird and like not he's not like a monster, you know, but he's just kind of this strange character that you don't really know what his ultimate goal is but you get a sense of where he's coming from you know no he explains he does things for science and for monsters (laughs) essentially actually uh, I think a really good character moment for him is when uh, another character uh, who's one of the Russian uh, soldiers kind of a psychopath uh, he's captured he's animal mother and he's Mm -hmm. basically screaming uh, obscenities to Frankenstein (laughs) Uh, very says being polite, and then eventually he break, like they just break down into a "fuck you" off. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah. He says the the one character is yelling "fuck you" in his face, and he's yeah. saying "don't do this, don't do this," yeah. and then finally he's like "fuck me, fuck you." Yeah. <laughs> and just that a level of a touch of liberty, strangeness yeah. to this, like, and who is this character? I don't know. I, I was like, I, I really adored the villain in this movie. Uh, I agree, of course. I think the guy who played him, sorry, I don't have a name offhand, but he did an amazing job at it. And as you said earlier. You don't often see, like you don't often spend the last third of the movie like being buddies with the villain as he explains to you yeah. his entire like method to his you know what he's doing, which I thought was a nice touch and it is interesting be, given you know, and especially given that it was a found footage like first person view type of film, it was cool. He's like, "You filming this? You filming this? Yo, come here, come follow me this way. I want you to see this." And like, or or right. he's trying to play with the camera, like, "Oh, is it, is it recording yet?" Yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, I, I I thought he was a great antagonist and did a great job. Within it, I agree. I, I'm going to give it a one. All right. If we're, if we're up to that point, yep. I'll give it a one as well. All right. Frankenstein. Frankenstein gets a one from me, of course. Now we're on to protagonist, which I will show address first. This one I wavered about because of the setup. It was a Band of Brothers kind of thing, right? So instantly you're supposed to like you'll get a feeling of camaraderie, <laughs> almost literary comrades about them, and <laughs> yes, yeah. and that was fine. Um. I think they could have sort of dropped off, maybe, maybe necessarily so, because it's a horror film, like later on. But I certainly like the the reveal of the captain. Died off. Yeah, but you know, both they got sawed <laughs> off, if you will. Oh, puns all around. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, fellas. Full round. Full so, round. So, given all that, they're perfectly serviceable, and like they, they, if not, were fully fleshed out. They each had like the, again, it's a horror movie thing, right? So they each had like the archetype personality to them. Goody. Well. To me, the only protagonist is the uh, filmmaker. Mm. Although he does have all the comrades in there, and I, I initially thought that I guess uh, you're right. They're mostly. Mm. I initially thought that other character because he would be the silent kind of uh, audience um, surrogate. Surrogate. Yeah. However, they have a nice twist on him that gives him a personality that was l- not lacking, but non-existent well it the gives out, a, uh, out his of the movie. character yeah. yeah and when that happened he definitely was elevated to protagonist especially when you like okay. he he's you find out halfway through that he is working for the uh, Russian army to capture Frankenstein and it kind of plays that you feel that this character is callous and you know it's, it's a twist but it was played very well like I didn't feel it was uh didn't, I didn't feel it came out of nowhere. I thought it was done very well. And then you find out even later another twist that he's doing this 
in order to rescue, I assume, his parents from a gulag or something like that. Right, yes. right. So he becomes he becomes the villain for a moment, but then he becomes sympathetic and you understand why he's doing what he mm, is. Sure. And that solidified him as a protagonist in my mind, and I felt that it was a very interesting kind of to have a grayly moral character as protagonist in a horror film. Mm. It, it, this was a much better um, main character than this movie probably deserved. It was much more <laughs> complex, and I have to give it full credit for that. I definitely agree with that. I guess you sort of convinced me, yeah. Um, you know, at the beginning, I thought maybe it might be two. Like, I thought Radio Guy, Comrade Radio, might have been... I think we said that to ourselves. He could have been... He was, it was almost potentially set up to be the main character, but then was In not. In a lesser horror movie, he would have been. Yeah, right. I agree I, with that. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of wavering on this. Like, does the rest of the crew bear uh, protagonist status? And I, I think you might have just convinced me that they really don't. They're probably all secondary other than the cameraman. And I kind of like that for... Maybe maybe there's two protagonists, the cameraman, and kind of the audience member through through most of the first half of the movie. You like he's he's the one that actually is holding the camera, but you don't really know anything about him for the first half. Yeah. Maybe yeah, you a little get a brief more. moment in the beginning, first sixty percent right. maybe, and you see him a couple times, but like that's kind of it. And he says a couple words, but um, really, it's it's your it's it's most of it is you going through this like hell of war and then this hell of you know having lobster monsters Monster slap their hands slap their lobster hands at you <laughs> the only thing I'll disagree with you with that is again in a lesser horror movie yes but they use the found footage film very well in this that he's not saying much but the way he's using the camera and the supporting cast's interactions with him the, like people flipping him off right. or like cursing at him for filming or don't don't like record this where like you know committing cr- war crimes yeah like those kind of interactions un- oh, he does it, it, he does get a personality through that yeah. through those interactions I, I agree I with think that. you're right yeah, you convinced me so sure it, given that he's the only protagonist I'm still gonna like him I like he has a great arc like you said that I was gonna bring up the double sort of the double subversion like yeah he reveals himself and he's like but then he reveals why he's doing all this and that of course makes him sympathetic so yeah um, you convinced me and I still like him as even if he's the sole protagonist mm. yeah I, I I I completely agree with that uh, so now, one's now that I've thought about it more yeah I'll, I'll, I'll give him a one uh, I'll, I'll give his development a one one's for the camera for work sure. one's for the camera work I mean I I also thought the actor did a very good job with the limited screen time. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, he's, well. he's very memorable to me, even though he is playing the role of the guy from uh, Enemy of the Gates. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> with way less to work with. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that brings us to the secondary characters. Steve-O, you can uh, start us off on this one. Well, having said what we said, I think there are two sets of secondary characters. There is the band of Russian soldiers and the horrible monster yes, creatures. So, of course. <laughs> and, no, and you forgot the uh, random Nazis that show up for ten minutes. <laughs> oh, I, I, like, yes, I agree that they are secondary characters, but they're not. They're not going to factor into my uh, <laughs> right. accounting here. Um, I think that the band of you know Russian bros do all right. Uh, kind of being, you know, portraying the sense of uh, wartime mentality and like being really at turns like really close with each other and like having a fraternal bond and then at the same time being really vulgar and crass with in terms of the ex- the external world you know like they kind of live in their own bubble and everything outside of that is kind of an enemy to them um and the the monsters whoever did the uh the effects did a great job i thought <laughs> um not that they had too much personality but they look fucking cool and you know we're pretty scary as far as uh b-grade movie monsters go so i mean i mean i think that's all uh, that's all the secondary character uh, i would go to go into depth a little bit with this because in a sense all the russian soldiers were for the most part one-dimensional characters they had 1. one point char- five yeah, they had one character trait mm. that 
but all of them were really well done. I understood who everyone was. Right. What role they played. Hell, even hippie sniper guy who I don't had think he said zero a line, lines yeah. had I think he was had a couple of yells during combat or something like that. But he had like he played his role. And again, I thought all of them were done well. Yeah, it's it's a horror movie. What am I expecting to have all these like <laughs> nuanced characters in there? Yeah, you want six nuanced like yeah. <laughs> extra characters who are all just going Sorry, to you die. You can't have Saving Private Ryan and Doctor Frankenstein in one movie. It's just <laughs> not possible. And yeah, like they put the one character is kind of a psychopath. He wanted to have uh, like once the captain died, who was pro Mother Russia and kind of a fatherly figure. When he died, he wanted to take over, and then the kind of stoic um, radio operator that they fought over. Again, it was a lot of like the war tropes in mm. there. Yeah. But again, it, it worked. They, it, they took one of each, threw them in there together, <laughs> and they were like, all right, now you're... A, but they, I, I will give Scott the one-and-a-half-dimensional thing because despite the fact that they were all kind of different personality types, they all kind of meshed together pretty well. <laughs> like, when, when it came to, like, you know, all right, here's... It, it, every, everybody listened to the captain when he was still alive, and, like, you know... The, they it made sense what they did made sense while they were doing it and that kind of like they worked as a unit they worked as a team while everyone was still alive until you know shit got crazy but I agree with all that here's the one thing right I believe that they were a unit a Mm -hmm. little like you know platoon unto themselves they had uh, chemistry I guess between them I believe that they had been in other situations in the war together I believe it's a squad yes Mm -hmm. well whatever (laughs) whatever it may be I believe that they were soldiers who had formed a bond with each other together and have gone through other situations, and now they're going through this fucking ridiculous, crazy horror one as well. I had a question for you guys. Remember the German, the female German nurse mm-hmm. character? First of all, they I don't know if this is intentional or not, if it's brilliant or incompetence, <laughs> right. but um, I'm, I'm going to side on brilliant. It's always hard to tell. That they're setting this woman up to be like a main character for like, uh, like uh, basically halfway through the film... Uh, four uh, German soldiers uh, join with the Russians and there's conflict between them and you think that oh like I understood like three of them would die but perhaps this one female (laughs) character would join the main character for the rest of it she dies immediately so the question I have to say is later on when they're in Dr. Frankenstein's honor there's a female like nurse who is helping how many German tunes to herself as well is that the same is that applied to be the same? Uh, I have character? no idea. I don't know. It's a really good theory. I couldn't tell if it was the same. Moment. I couldn't tell either. Like if it was the same actress or not versus implied to be that I cannot answer for you. But I was going to say this. Yeah, she was set up as a love interest. Like in a horror movie, oh, you find a girl and you rescue her, and she's like, I can, you know, monsters are going crazy. She's like, she's basically slightly exposition dumping on them about what's happening, and then she's shipped on a monster essentially. Like <laughs> she gets murdered in the next five minutes, and is never mentioned again or brought up again ever. <laughs> But I, I think that, mo- especially the latter two-thirds of the film, the monsters really have a lot of personality. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm going to speak about that uh, to a question later on, but I definitely agree. So my assessment of secondary characters is going to be a one. Yeah, I'll give it a one as well. Uh, I think they did a good job. D- uh, like Despite the fact that I think that they were all fairly one-dimensional, as we mentioned. But they served the role um, they need to be in. But... Go. I I wasn't annoyed with any of them. Like I didn't have any problems with any of the characters. Uh, as exactly. far as like, obviously, I hated the guy that was a douchebag. But like, you're supposed to though. Yeah, obviously. yeah exactly. He, did a good job like, he served that. his purpose in the film, and and I think that's what's important for a secondary character. Fair enough. Yeah, for Harley not having a character, I was rooting to die. Um, like that's something big. So I'm going <laughs> to give it a one. All right, definitely. Alrighty, let's start off on dialogue. Go ahead. I'm really torn about this. I can't think. I, there was well. First of all, there were no cringeworthy dialogue moments in here, right? So that's definitely a plus. And in fact, there were a couple clever lines. However, you had Russians and you had Germans, and their accents Wavered. sometimes <laughs> went into English. Um, also, they had this really confusing scene. <laughs> yeah, they did. Where. It's implied mm. that even though both of them are speaking English, the one character couldn't understand, like the uh, Russian uh, soldier couldn't understand the German soldier, so they had to have a translator. That's fine, even though they're both speaking English. I, I, I would buy that, except 
for the fact that that's never brought up again, and it's those two characters I've seen conversing. It was definitely yeah, and they they talk to each other. That's the biggest problem. Is like, mm. oh, I thought you were just speaking German. You were just speaking Russian. You couldn't understand each other, and now you're just having a conversation. It was definitely up, but maybe they did it to save time because they didn't want to waste time, like having a translator being like, then to say that's, 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 not, that's not an excuse. It's a facetious thing, of course, but that is not an excuse. That, I, I'm not defending. I completely it. agree with you, Ian. That, that, I think that was like completely just terrible scripting at that point mm. but like it was sloppy I would also agree with you that there was nothing really cringeworthy like no none of dialogue, dialogue that were really bad um and there were a couple good ones although nothing like really really memorable <laughs> except for the fuck you scene I, I think I'll remember that if, if I remember any other dialogue throughout this movie I think it's gonna be that one <laughs> alright uh, I'm gonna remember uh Captain Jew Boy um <laughs> I, I, I don't like they do a really good job of kind of showing the racism in uh, Russian soldiers as well as like the German uh, yeah. one. Yeah, so everyone's a monster, as yes. you said. So I, I, again, some of it was very effective, but there's too many inconsistencies in both the accent and <laughs> who could understand who. It's it, it was sort of like a Family Guy in the early <laughs> years, whether. People can understand Stewie. Can understand Stewie, yeah. <laughs> but it, it wasn't clever. Um, <laughs> they weren't actually trying to do that. I, I have to give it a zero. All right, fair enough. Well, let me just speak uh, briefly about it. Um, see, the thing is, our usual measure stick is, as you said, whether or not it's cringeworthy, and it wasn't. It was perfectly solid. And so, while I, again, I see what you mean. Like, yeah, it was funny that the accents kind of slipped in and out. I don't think it was enough. I think I may apply that to a, the next question, maybe, to give it like you know, demerits on that. But what they were saying itself was perfectly fine, served the plot, moved it forward. None of it was stilted. None of it was cringeworthy. So I think on, on that front, I'm going to give it a one. I'm going to side with Ian on this one. I think um, it's it's not that it was bad dialogue, because it wasn't. And, it, and we've it. all mentioned that. It, it wasn't bad dialogue, but it wasn't like standout. Um, it was plot moving, and it was fine. And I know what you're going to say. You know what? Just say it. <laughs> I'm just going to say, we, we said this about, Ian said it, in fact, about Mad Max, that it was basically like uh, workmanship, like, hey, you, you're good at this, hey, we need to go down here, hey, monsters are coming at us, hey, let's go back here. Like, it was more or less that the whole time. But I will say but that I appreciated the, all that the dialogue. Was fine. I appreciated the dialogue in Mad Max right. a lot more than I appreciated right. the dialogue. That's what I'm saying. But so, at the end of the day, that's exactly the role it serves, so... I don't know. Right, That's but it I'm wasn't. Saying. It wasn't as I, I okay. thought that the dialogue in Mad Max was more effective at doing that than than the dialogue in this was. Yes, there were good points throughout, but it wasn't. All right, it wasn't enough. I get it. It wasn't amazing. You know, it, it wasn't great, and it was. There wasn't enough to like save it. I think right. that this movie was really good overall, and I'm not taking anything away from that. And the dialogue did not hurt it, but it what it didn't. Uh, all right. It didn't elevate it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give it a zero. All right. Well, let's move on to atmosphere slash style. Um, This one I have to give the hardest of ones to because the monster design was, for what it was, was pretty damn good. And even, like, the the surrounding, like, when they find, like, the graves and all that and all that, like, everything surrounding it, even until they encounter the monsters. And then when they start encountering more and more monsters, they kept it fresh. There were different ones, and they did different funny, like, not even funny things, but, like, clearly Frankenstein had been messing around with a lot of uh, prototypes if you a lot of various designs and it looked really good um so even though i will say one thing though this is more of an like maybe in the previous uh, iteration of mats we would say uh immersion so yeah that all is all well and fine but frankenstein's master plan is to create monsters that only can fight in close quarters combat <laughs> and will fall to the most advanced projectile weapon mankind's ever invented i.e the gun <laughs> so therefore you know while maybe like in theory, that was a good idea, but in practicality, it probably isn't. <laughs> but uh, they looked really cool, is all I'm saying. They had they very they, again they, they had diverse uh, designs and were really like fun to watch and see what they were gonna do. I'm gonna go completely in the opposite direction of you. I thought the style of the whole like kind of World War Two. Where did they get all uh, all these props <laughs> from? Like they, they it was they had a I, defunct like artillery. Gun. Yes, they had. Like, <laughs> I was astounded by the level of detail they I put into that too, this, yeah. the war. And on that, like, a couple of the special effects, like uh, the gore stuff, 
was kind of cringe. I would say cringeworthy, but it was kind of unbelievable. Like there's an early intestine scene. Yeah, sure, and it would look it looked off. Yeah. Agreed, but but well, like the, the the style they captured for this was it felt very much like a period piece. Mm-hmm. And I have to I agree with that for a low budget horror movie. That's astounding. I yeah I I, I think that they kind of had the aesthetic of like a. I don't know. It's kind of similar to like Saving Private Ryan. I know we mentioned that earlier. But like you know, it's that kind of World War Two war movie. You kind of felt like you were in, you were there in World War Two. You know, in, in World War Two, like stomping through some forests that had just an army had just been through. You know, like mm-hmm. it looked like war torn. There were a lot of really Germany cool, France. just little details that were really interesting, and and you know, just like I remember seeing some like milk jugs that were just standing around in a in a in a in the courtyard outside of the church and i just remember thinking like holy shit you know like what would make you think to put that to put that in there put that in that scene you know like (laughs) that little that little detail set design whoever did set design killed it yeah yeah it was it was very good uh style wise you you kind of never had this you never had a feeling that you were that this was a film made in 2013, let's just say. I agree and, with that. And, yeah. and as a found footage film from World War II, that's a good. That's a very, very good thing. Oh, also, one of the style pieces that I really, really enjoyed was that they. There's always that. Uh, there's a joke about found footage film that you're seeing a plot line of someone filming something on their camera, but it's in HD. Right. Like you know, so, like how does this work? But here, it really felt that. You're seeing it through a kind of ten millimeter. Of course, it's better than a ten right, millimeter. Right? No, but, it, it, true. They, I think they did but a they convincing get, they, job. They caught they all the lenses, like changing lenses mm-hmm. and yeah, things the like filters, that. Filters, so that I could, and it really like, and you sometimes heard the like the ten millimeter the film. Quick, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was very impressed by that level of detail. In fact, at one point, uh, one of the lenses uh, breaks, so that you, it has a crack in it. The rest yeah, of the, the film, uh, yeah, the crack. So mm-hmm. if you're seeing it through the one lens, it has the crack, but then they switch to the other one mm-hmm. and. Just it, it, the love the the eye for detail in this was. I agree with fantastic. all that too. So that, I mean, I'll add that even to what I said. And certainly, yeah, it was very well done. They uh, paid, you know, they clearly took the time and effort to flesh all that out and have it in there. I completely agree. Yeah. All right, so that means I believe we're all giving this ones, a one. Ones all around, I think. All right, which brings us to the final question, Stephen. Would you recommend Frankenstein's Army? I would. It was a surprisingly good movie. I really expected it to be terrible, and it was not terrible at all. A lot of, like we just mentioned, a lot of uh, eye for detail. Despite the fact that it was low budget, and obviously they couldn't put a ton of money into the monster design, they had a really wide range of different monster designs. Mm. The, you know... The gore was mostly pretty real looking, despite. Well, I, I think they, I think they accomplished that through like a lot of quick cuts and things like that. But that's fine. I, I mean, as long as it doesn't. The only thing that seemed really off was the um, scene where the captain gets his intestines like cut out, and it's just <laughs> sure. like a string of intestines like down the freaking hallway or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, other than that, it, it all looked pretty damn good and um the acting was pretty solid as well i had no complaints i really liked frankenstein and you know i i I would recommend it go watch frankenstein's army all right i think this movie deserves to be seen (laughs) the level of again you pointed out the level of detail in this was astounding you can tell that the people who created this put a lot of effort into it right and that effort really should be rewarded mm. if you're a horror fan this is something you should probably should do it's, it's a lot of fun uh, I, I don't think it's all that scary right. you, but I enjoyed watching it I, I enjoyed, it sort of reminds me of a better version of like Hellraiser 6 or something <laughs> <laughs> alright like when they started doing like the clever things, well, the uh, what are they called, Cena bites or whatever? Yeah. Cena bites, yeah, yeah man. Uh, it, it had that very much that feel. It's a lot of fun to see what the next kind of monster is going to look like, like where they're going to go with it. And it, not only was the detail fantastic, but the script 
was well done. Like, just the uniqueness of the arc. So, again, it deserves to be seen. I absolutely agree. Like, it was a great horror film, and even if not that big in the horror, like, it's still a pretty decent one to watch. Or maybe turn it off at the first 40 minutes, like, yeah, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> a, a full propaganda piece. <laughs> Slash, found, slash uh, you know, um, embedded journalist <laughs> trying to, in World War Two, But yeah, it was great overall. It was certainly way better than like some of the straight-up like American horror films I've seen in a while. Mm. And I, I, I think I'm going to echo what Ian just said. It deserves to be seen because they clearly put the effort and the time and the detail into trying to make it the best movie they could make it. And I think they pulled it off pretty damn well. Yeah. Anyone else have anything else to say about it? Yeah, I think... Uh, All right, so let's tell it the scores. I believe that's a one for everybody recommends this film. Yeah, yep. holy Which, crap, this yeah. film got a... It got, it got a high score. score. Steve-O and Ian gave this Frankenstein's Army an eight. I, of course, gave it a ten, as I said I might. <laughs> it's... There's nothing wrong with this film, fucking see. Even, you know, given it being a perhaps, you know, lesser known or viewed genre, which leaves us off at an 8.6 overall, which is pretty... 8.6, 6, 6, 6, 6, Repeating, of course, yes. Which is pretty <laughs> damn good, you know. Go see it, uh, have a good time, and check out the Frankenstein's monsters that were way more inventive than the original. <laughs> All right. For, uh, I'm Steve. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and go create your own monsters. <laughs> Good night. This has been Bon Mots. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Music by Chris Morgan. Editing and engineering by Stephen Hermosa. This has been a Lost Owners production. All rights reserved.